So hello everyone. Uh, let's start with today's session. I hope I am audible to all of you. Okay. So in the last session we were talking about visualizations. Right? We started with the fifth unit, that as mentioned in your syllabus. We started with this data visualization and tools. Right. And yesterday what we talked about is uh, Tableau. Right. We have seen we have seen a comparison of uh, Tableau. Right, data visualization with Tableau and Microsoft Excel. Right, so we have seen a very simple data set. We have imported that data set with the help of Microsoft Excel, and then we try to look at that particular data in different different angles. And same thing, uh, we try to do it with Tableau, and we concluded that the the work which we can we have done actually with the help of Excel. So as compared to Excel, it takes less less time. For Tableau, and yes, there are a lot of features uh, of Tableau. So, as a data visualization tool, in the last session we talked about this particular tool. Right. So, once I will uh, just upload the document and everything, right. So, you you will get to see the document again. If you are interested, you can refer the document. I will be sharing that, which will be related to installation of Tableau and how to make use of Tableau as free for lifetime. That trick is also given in the document. Right? So, yesterday the link also I have already shared. So this is for those who are not aware about it. Today we will continue with the same unit. Right? We already talked about introduction or uh, to data visualization. We will see uh, these points: challenges to big data visualization, techniques for uh, visual data representation, and types of data visualization. Right? So I think that will be all for this uh, four unit. If anything remains, then we will try to discuss about all those points. Right? So yes, this is what we have seen actually. This is the thing with Tableau. Uh, I told you uh, already. If there is a Excel file or text file, JSON file, Microsoft Access PDF, some special data is there. So all these types of data you can handle with the help of Tableau. Even you can go for the databases like Microsoft uh, SQL Server, MySQL, Oracle Database, Amazon Redshift, and many more. Right? There are a lot of other uh, databases with which Tableau can work. And yesterday I have shown you enough reasons why one should know about Tableau. Right? Today we will be discussing about some of the challenges, as it's mentioned in your syllabus, challenges to big data visualization. Right? So just in concern with this particular point only, I have discussed uh, big data concept already. Right? So here we will try to talk about challenges to big data, and then let's see if we get some time, then we will go and we will try to do some visualization with the help of uh, Seaborn package. In Python, right? So here uh, you might be knowing that there is a package called as Seaborn. This particular package I am talking about, and in Seaborn there are uh, some ready-made data sets which are available. Like Tips is a data set which is available in Seaborn. Uh, Flights is also a data set which is by default available. So we will try to import those data sets. We will try to load those data sets, and then we will go and we will try to do some visualizations like this. Okay. So first of all, let me talk about the theoretical points, challenges to big data visualization, techniques for visual data representation, and types of data visualization. So this is the first thing I will try to finish, as this is what is mentioned in your syllabus. Right? And then I will go and I will try to show you some hands-on if we have some time. Okay. Now let's talk about challenges to big data visualization. Let's let's uh, try to start our discussion with that particular point, and let's see what are the challenges to Uh, big data visualization. As we are talking about data visualization itself, so obviously there is going to be mm, most of the times it is going to be big data only. And I already talked about big data, right? So let's see some challenges uh, which you might come across or which we we come across in general, right? So challenges to big data visualization. So this particular term, big data, that's why we already seen. And just in relation to this, right? Related to this particular term, big data, we have seen that it is actually nothing but it revolves around five things: volume, velocity, variety, velocity, and height. So, challenges to big data visualization. Right. So that's why I will uh, assume that now you are very much aware about the term big data. Right. So with that knowledge, let's continue with the next point. That is nothing but challenges to big data visualization. So as as we have seen data visualization also, right. So data visualization has actually changed our society considerably. Right, as you can see, there are. We talk about any application data visualization is there. Right, we talk about uh, 
anything any domain you talk about right or uh, <clears throat> well, what you can say any area you talk about any business you talk about data visualization is always going to be there so data visualization has changed our society considerably okay from the most uh, simple projected line across a football field to uh, through to complex uh, graph outline like right? uh, graph outline market fluctuations they they are changing the way uh, that our society is approaching and understanding that and data visualization is actually playing playing a very very important role uh, in all those areas right so despite the huge impact of visualizations have had they still face some considerable challenges even if right uh, i mean to say even if they have so many advantages but still there are some challenges and or i can say challenges which might come in future maybe because of this uh, data because if you can see uh, most of the times right the data which is being generated is of our current scenario for example just take example of uh, any social media like facebook twitter linkedin instagram youtube right so obviously most of the data which is being generated is big data right and that's why there is going to be challenge uh, for visualizing the data so let's try to talk about very common uh, challenges to big data visualization the first challenge in future might be because of something called as virtual reality right again this is the new for many of you virtual reality we are we call it as so why am i saying that because of virtual reality there will be a challenge in big data visualization so virtual reality is going to have a huge impact on the potential data visualization that right? uh, is allowing allowing people to interact with the data in third dimension for the first time right so you know that if you have your data in 3d dimension right so instead of visualizing the data in 2d or two dimensional two dimension way if you if, if it's possible for you to visualize the data in three dimensions obviously it's going to take less time and it will be easy right so yes that's why virtual reality is going to be a challenge Okay. So for example, imagine being able to pick a data set and move it around on y-axis, right? Uh, on any axis, for example. Just just imagine like this: you pick up a data set and you are able to move that particular data set around any axis to compare it to another. It isn't too far away, actually. According to you, might be knowing about uh, one uh, data analytics group that is that that is actually a company, statistical analytics system. So according to this company, according to SAS, we can process. Uh, you might be knowing we can process only one kb of data, only one kilobit of information per second. So we can process only one kb of information per second on a flat screen, right? For example, the screen which I am right now using, it's a flat screen, right? So we can only process one kb per second of data, per second of information on a flat screen, which can be increased significantly. right if it is analyzing 3d data right so that's that's how this virtual reality is going to affect data visualization see right now on a flat screen you what you can say is uh, the information which is being processed is at this particular rate one kilobyte per second right but if it is a 3d screen right this particular thing this particular uh, speed can be increased significantly right if it is analyzed the 3d virtual reality world that's why that's why this virtual reality is one of the most common challenge you can say for big data visualization in fact uh, we have already seen uh, right for example some applications which actually use world, uh, vr data visualization to improve uh, to improve the results for example you might have heard about uh, formula 1 right so formula 1 tire performance you might know i don't know i don't know whether if some some of you are interested So you, maybe you might have heard this in news or something like some article, something like that. Okay. So Formula One tires actually. So to just to increase the performance of Formula One tires, right? This this 3D virtual reality is actually 3D visualization was done in the help of 3D virtual reality. Right. This this is the most uh, what we can say the latest example which which we can talk about 3D visualization. Right. But however, the challenge with this uh, comes with trying to get Uh, get in the hands of businesses who benefit from the technology. Right? Virtual reality is something that is currently seen as uh, predominantly for mostly for entertainment, entertainment I can say, or uh, maybe movies and all those things. Right? So trying to get a senior leader in uh, Fortune 500 company. Right? So you might be knowing about something called as uh, uh, 
uh, some applications you might have heard about it, VR headsets and all those. Those are very compact, right? But this is going to take several years. Obviously, VR is going to take several years, and data visualization years to say uh, front and center until then, right? Even though virtual reality cannot be used in all the applications, but yes, uh, once it comes, actually, definitely. Uh, Till then, actually, data visualization is going to be there, right? But once this uh, virtual reality is going to come, obviously, it's again going to be very, very challenging to visualize the data, right? Similarly, there is another challenge, and that is nothing but augmented reality, right? So, what is this augmented reality? Again, this matter comes across augmented reality also. Or again, there are different different uh, applications which we will try to talk about just to understand what is this. So, augmented augmented reality. Uh, May will be the single biggest change uh, that we are going to see regarding this new data visualization. So to some extent, we have seen some of uh, augmented reality already. Some 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 applications of augmented reality already. You might have heard about something called as uh, Google Glass, right? So you might be knowing why why it is actually at least you have come across some advertisement or some article regarding this Google Glass, right? So what it does actually it overlays data onto what you can see in front of you. This here that glass. Let me just try to show it to you. Uh, mm. I think I already opened the tab. See Google Glass. It looks like something like this. This is this is Google Glass, right? So what you can what you can do here is you can actually see uh, whatever you want just in front of your eyes on that, on that particular glass, right? So it overlay data onto what you can see in front of. So one of the key reasons for sudden concentration of AR or augmented reality, or why people are talking about augmented reality right now, one of the key reasons for that is this particular thing you might have come across many times, right? Some of so, right, many of you might be knowing about this particular game, Pokemon Go, right? So this is one of the uh, common reasons why this uh, augmented reality has is being in, in, in discussion. Right, because of this particular uh, application, I can say, right? So this is a, this is one of the key reasons for sudden concentration of uh, augmented reality. It is, it is a huge success of uh, it is because of the huge success of Pokemon Go, which not only showed the capabilities of uh, augmented reality, but it also introduced it to a wide and diverse audience. So it is because of this kind of application, uh, AR is being in the discussion, right? The challenge that data visualization is going to have is that those creating them need to make sure uh, they are doing so in an understandable and uh, what you can say non obtrusive way. Right? So it, it actually creates a new dynamic where data is, uh, where data overlay needs to be clear or you can say concise. Right? So it's, it's a fine line to balance on an, uh, a real challenge for those who are used, uh, used to creating traditional visualization. Right, those people who are still making use of some traditional tools for uh, visualization. So obviously, this uh, if this this is being used in most of the applications, then for those people who are still making use of traditional uh, technologies for data visualization, obviously it's going to be a challenge for them. Right? Then, so that's why virtual reality is uh, that can be one point under challenges to data visualization. Augmented reality can be another point. Third point we can talk about is uh, development. How let, let's try to talk about this. Why development can be even more challenge, or why development can be another point uh, if we talk about challenges to big data. Right. So as we have seen, uh, this this one virtual reality and uh, augmented reality are likely to be interesting technologies in the future. Right. But for the time being, we are still going to be consuming the majority of our data to what you can say uh, traditional uh, two-dimensional scale. Right. So as the number of data visualizations increases, uh, you know, almost every area, the chances of you are standing out decreases too, as, as you are trying to get the top of uh, larger and larger pile. Right. So it means that uh, while these are the these other technologies are developing, people working in data visualization need to try and find a way of making their visualization stand out from the crowd. And that's where they are going to need some tools. Like like yesterday we have seen something called like Tableau. Right. Tableau is going to Give you all these capabilities, right? And obviously, uh, it should not make all the things very complex, right? So this could mean more vivid colors, increase in the activity, or simply using the most interesting data. But finding the correct way is certainly a hurdle to overcome in the next few years, right? 
right? So that's why the development is also going to be a challenge in case of big data visualization. I can and obviously, one more challenge we can uh, add is levels of understanding. Also, in more cases, I can say different levels of understanding. So it actually depends on uh, individuals, okay? different levels of understanding. So why why this kind of a point can be added in uh, challenges to the data visualization, right? So as data has spread throughout society, one of the elements that has that has become evident is that there's a huge variation in the levels of Maybe see if I see one graph, do people while uh, do people so I, if I go and if I try to see some visualization, I may come up with some interpretation. You people might come with some other interpretation. That's that's the thing with different level of understanding, right? So this this is again one uh, challenge in case of big data visualization. Uh, we can right. So this could even be in a high uh, power business setting where people who are used to see basic uh, Excel graphs kind of. Uh, and they do not understand anything more about it. So the idea of interactivity within visualized data is not something they, they would uh, ever feel necessary, right? However, there are others who benefit from more complex visualizations, where uh, they can see as much as uh, possible in a smaller space as they can to, to some interactive designs or maybe some complex features. So it is therefore difficult for those designing visualizations to match up to the a wide ranging understanding of data and data visualization, right? So it, it could be that uh, multiple visualizations are created for different levels of data interest, but that's simply uh, wasting the resources. Right? So yes, different levels of understanding can be a challenge for big data visualization. And one more thing, which can be taken as a challenge, which can be which can be put as a point under challenges to big data is the thing of technical skills. Right? So if still, even though a lot of big data is being generated and if still people are going with uh, traditional tools only, obviously, uh, that, is, that is going to be a point of mass, right? So as we move forward, uh, move towards more interactive and complex trends for data visualizations, right? Uh, we are going to, we are going to be seeing an increased need for technical skills for, for uh, what we can say, for us to understand the big data. And then translate the data and then create visualizations around the process. Right? So, as we you might be doing that, we already have a shortage of some uh, skillful people, like we have a shortage of data scientists and people who can feed the right data to the right people. So, this is going to be a key challenge for creation of decent data visualization, which can pinpoint important data right? and avoid the risk. So, yes, technical skills is going to be uh, again one of the most important points and challenges to big data. So these are some of the points which, uh, which one can come across or we can talk about, uh, we can put under challenges to big data visualization. Right? So virtual reality, augmented reality, develop, uh, development, right? different levels of understanding and technical skills. So these are some of the points uh, which can be put under challenges to big data. Right? So let's try to discuss about the next point uh, as per your syllabus. So this one we talked about, right? let's try to talk about techniques for Visual data representation. Let's let's try to talk about this particular part. Techniques for <coughs> visual representation. Again, now see there are different different techniques for uh, visual representation. I can say. Right? Let me just write it down. Right. So I, I'm I'm just writing down the heading because those people who will join late at least they will come from that. Okay, we are discussing this particular part. Right. So techniques for the visual representation of it. This is the point which we are talking about. Techniques for visual representation of data. Now see, again, I can say techniques or steps or the ways to visually represent the data. There can be different different names which uh, you can actually give to this particular to this particular point, right? We can actually represent it. Different different now, what I can see, uh, what I can say about it is, we can here here we can actually follow certain steps one after another. For example, I can call it as data visualization techniques, right? So maybe let's suppose uh, first of all, what you need to know is or what I will do is <clears throat> here, right? This is what we want to talk about. So. Data visualization techniques I want to talk about. 
Now again, so here what I am trying to do is I will try to lead down the steps which which are going to help me uh, to know the steps or which are going to tell me the steps how I can go and I can actually uh, visualize them. Which are those general techniques, right? So this is the point which we are trying to talk about. For example, uh, the first point obviously is going to be what you need to understand the data, is, right? So what I what I want to say is, if you are going to visually represent some data, obviously first of all you should know who is going to uh, look at that particular visualization or who is going to make use of that particular visualization. That means I can say that you should know your audience, right? Who is going to see the visualization which you are going to create? Is it going to be a group of technical people? Is it going to be a group of new people, right? Other people who have uh, business knowledge, something like that. So obviously, this is the first point I can mention under data visualization. Right? That means, first of all, know your audience, people who are going to make use of your uh, visualizations or maybe dashboard. The second thing I can talk about is this is the first thing you should uh, note down about your visualization. The second thing can be for well, uh, once you are aware about who are the people who are going to make use of the, the visualization, which is going to be created by you, you need to know what is your goal, right? So set your goals. What you want to achieve to that particular uh, visualization? Do you want then, uh, do you want these uh, visualizations to help the people, to help the customers to make some decisions, to avoid the risks, right? Or whatever it may be. So, what is what is the goal? So, set your goals. What what you want them to understand this, or what they want actually. Uh, what is the purpose? Right. After that, again, see. Now, yesterday, if you if you people remember, we even talked about different different types of uh, plots with the help of which you can go and you can. Visualize it. For example, the line chart, scatter plot, right? A donut chart we talked about. There is something called as box and whisker plot, uh, which you can go and you can plot. Distribution plot. So yes, there are different different types of uh, plots which are available, graphs which are available with the help of which you can go and you can visualize the data. So I can say the third thing. Once you are, once you know your audience, uh, once you set your goals, uh, you need to choose the right charts, right? So I can say choose the right chart type because see again there are a lot of uh, graphs, a lot of plots which are available with the help of which you can do a visualization. That's why choosing the right chart type is again very very important. So which one to choose? In which case it all depends on the experience actually, right? Obviously it also depends on the knowledge, your knowledge. It also depends on visualizer's knowledge about that particular uh, chart. So, for example, if I ask you what the difference between histogram or a bar chart, you should be able to know. Right? You should be able to understand. For this, you should uh, you should know both of them, right? So, yes, choose the right chart type. This is also one uh, technique I can say or step in uh, data visualization or visual representation of data. Now, the next thing I can point out is that, or the fourth point I can point out is that you need to take advantage of uh, what you can say different different uh, functionalities which are available. Right. So specifically, I can say take advantage of saying if you have different type of data. So obviously, uh, you can represent different types of data with different different colors. So take advantage of uh, color theory. I guess. Right. This is another step because again, uh, it also looks good as and and we know that human eyes always prefer uh, images or visualization. So always keep for visualization, right? So make use of uh, color theory for visualizing the data, right? Then the next point is going to be handle uh, what you can say, handle your big data. Obviously, as we are talking about big data, so handle your big data. So already talked about big data, what it is, it actually revolves around five weeks, volume, velocity, velocity, and varsity. So handle your big data. Obviously, you should be able to Face the data from the right sources, right? You should be able to store the data at the right place and there should not be any loss in the data. So, handle your data so that you, you, you will not lose anything. Right? And obviously, the sixth thing is going to be 
we need to make use of uh, so systematically storing the data means we need to make use of ordering something called as ordering or maybe you can make use of something like layouts right you can make the different different layouts uh, or i can say hierarchy suppose if we have different different product data so make use of hierarchy hierarchy why just to prioritize the things right what's your plan so you use ordering layouts hierarchy just to prioritize the thing depending on what is your goal right and maybe you can go and you can make use of something like word clouds so you might have heard about something called as a word cloud it is a cloud word cloud to the help of uh, python kind of a language right so word cloud is also go, going to be very very useful to know what type of a data is being used most of the times right so uh, use word clouds and i can say network diagrams so suppose if i want to show you network diagram right so if you people remember something like uh, hub rise and google which we have talked about in the previous sessions right so network diagram is like it is going to give you a basic idea about what data set what type of a data data set you have for example let me show you a network diagram how it looks like actually because uh, Again, it's possible with the help of uh, Python also. So let me show you the network diagram which I have plotted. Right. So there was a data of uh, what you can say uh, medicines for uh, newborn child. Right. So there are different different companies which uh, which develop those medicines. So what I have done is I actually tried to collect the data at one place. So which company develops which type of product? Okay, right. so let me show you first of all, and I done that with the help of network data. Let me show you. So this is just to show you how it actually looks like. You can move the network diagram from one place to another. Okay, so maybe for time being, I think it is taking some time to do. Actually, I am connected from today. I am connected from my mobile phone. So there was a problem for this. So that's why I am leaving. The speed is slow. Okay, it will open. Maybe I will show you once it actually opens. Uh, yeah, this one. This one. This is what I am saying. So I let me show you how it actually looks like. <coughs> so what happens with the help of this kind of a network diagram? You can go and you can actually drag your data at whatever the place you want. You can combine it with any other data set, and you can there itself look out how it looks like, and you can easily make the decisions with help of that particular network. So somewhere here I have plotted that. So uh, whatever the tool which I have used here is the tool of R Studio. But yes, same thing actually can be done with the help of uh, Python. Okay. Okay. Let it open. I will just. Try to show you once it opens. Okay. So I mean to say that you have a lot of uh, what you can say uh, tools, a lot of ways to go and to visualize the data. So one of the tools or the things which you can make use of is nothing but something like Word Cloud, right? So what is Word Cloud actually? Word Cloud is something like uh, which is going to show you which word is liberated the most number of times. The word which is liberated most, right? That the size of that word is going to be bigger. And then the next one, and the next one, and then next one, and so on. So yes, you can make use of word clouds and network diagram kind of thing uh, in in a data visualization steps. I guess. Okay. So till then, we'll move to the next point that is going to be the eighth one. That is, you need to include comparison. Yesterday I told you, right? I told you comparisons, compositions. So you need to include comparisons. Compare the data. Depending on whatever the domain it is, you need to compare it. Maybe make a comparison between uh, current performance and the previous performance, something like that. So you need to include comparison, and you need to include the graphs which can help you to uh, do the comparison. Right? So that that's going to be again a uh, very very helpful in case of visualization. And then the ninth point, this is going to be the eighth one. The so ninth is going to be apply visualization tools for the uh, digital age. Right, so here, here you can make use of some visualization tools like Tableau, Power BI, and so on. 
there are a lot of visualization tools which are available. Yesterday I have shown you this and I told you that something like Tableau and Power BI is actually in the form. Okay, just a minute, guys. I think uh, let me share the screen once again. <clears throat> I hope it's uh, visible to everyone. The screen is visible to everyone. Okay, maybe as we lost the connection and between that for that screen is the previous thing, whatever I had written earlier, it's also gone. Anyway, I will just try to continue from the point where I was. So I was talking about nine point, and that is the Tibet tools. So this is where you can make use of the tools like uh, Power BI and Tab. Right, and the last point, I think that was ten. Last point is going to be something like this. tell your tell. That means tell your story. Right? That is the basic purpose, right? This is the ultimate purpose of data visualization. So starting from doing your audience, setting the goals, uh, choosing the right type of charts, taking the advantage of some features like colors, handling your big data, right? Using layouts. Then uh, utilizing something like high, uh, what you can say, word clouds and macro diagrams, including comparisons, applying tools, and finally you get this stuff, right? So, basic purpose of using all these things is nothing but what? Telling the story, right? So, converting data to a story, that's what the use of our visualization is, because you know, right? Stories make the things easier to, to explain. That's a simple purpose of all these tools, actually. Right. So yes, this is what I can I can actually say about the techniques for visual data visualization. Again, I can I can I'm not saying that those are the hard and fast steps, but yes, more or less we'll find out that similar kind of steps will be applied for data visualization. Okay. So okay, let me show you this particular diagram is open or not. Yeah, see, this is called as this particular diagram is called as network diagram. Whatever you are able to see. So again, this is also one way of visualizing the data. Yeah, see this one. Whatever you are able to see, this is called as network diagram. Yeah, I think last one should be good. Now see here. Uh, Even you can go and you can change it. See, you can drop that particular diagram. Let me just uh, check that for a Now, see, so whatever you are able to see, these are nothing but the companies and the products which, which actually design different, different products for uh, uh, child, newborn child, actually. So here, this is whatever you are able to see. This is actually called as network diagram. This is one of the ways to visualize data, uh, which which makes the things very very clear. So see, this one. Now see, I can go and I can actually uh, drag and drag anything. With the help of this, I can see which product is very very important. Which is the product uh, or which is the company which produces most number of products. So this is just to give you an idea about. Uh, you can say a network diagram. Okay, so if you also want to see, if you want to go and if you want to plot this kind of a diagram uh, for some data set which is available with you, yes, you can go ahead and do it. Maybe in R as well as in Python, you can do all these things in Python also. I, I hope that many of you might be able to even try out all these things as well. Right? Whatever you are able to see, I, am, I have actually done it in R, but yes, you can do it in uh, Python, which is called as network B3 uh, diagram. Okay. If you want to save this, I will just try to send the link in the chat box. If you really want to just go through and just see how it is, you can refer this particular Otherwise, just call it about it. No problem. Okay. But yes, as we talked about this particular point, techniques for uh, visual data representation, yes, word clouds and all those things, you can make that. Even word cloud also has shown uh, somewhere. That one, maybe if you want, you can check it. So yes, that is that is the thing actually which I want to talk about for techniques for data visualization. Let's try to move to the next theoretical point, and that is the thing about this one. Types of data visualization. Which are the different types of uh, data visualization which are available? Anyway, yesterday we talked about 
some graphs right so but yes uh, there are, uh, it is not limited data visualization is not limited to the graphs or the plot which we talked about yesterday right so there are uh, different different uh, different types which are available again so now talking about this particular thing types of data visualization let's let's try to uh, see some of the basic types here types of data visualization okay <clears throat> so maybe with, with so much uh, information accessible at our fingerprints it's, it's actually important to understand how to organize that particular information into analyzable or actionable actionable impact right and that's where we need this uh, data visualization right if you manage multiple container assets with multiple data sources it can be diff difficult to determine how to shape your uh, analytics strategy see even if it is going to be a uh, text data Num numerical data, continuous data, image data, audio data, video data. Obviously, data visualization is going to be there. Suppose if, if you have an image, right? Now, processing the image, obviously, it's going to take time. So you need to apply the techniques accordingly, right? So, data visualization is the process of turning your data into graphical representation. It will communicate logical relationships and it will lead to more informed decision making, right? So, uh, you will see that today uh, many people sharing a list of various types of data organization and how, how you can actually implement an uh, approach, maybe uh, or how they are implementing the approach for data visualization in their organization. Right? So, in short, uh, talking about this particular term first, in short, I can say that data visualization is the representation of data in graphical or pictorial form. In simple words, I can say. Data visualization is nothing but representation of data in graphical or pictorial form, right? Because see, it actually allows you key decision makers, or it actually allows key decision makers to see complex analytics in, in a visual layout, and which make the things uh, simple for them. So, so they can identify uh, new patterns or graph challenging concepts. So, for example, uh, from website metrics and sales peak performance to marketing campaign results and product uh, adoption rates, there is a range of data points your organization needs to turn, right? So, just to talk about types of data visualization, as some of them we have already talked about, right? So, this is this is what they are going to make it of. So, data visualization, whenever we talk about, obviously, we will come, come across something like, like uh, column chart. Then there is something called as bar chart. So, obviously, these are different, different ways uh, which you can make use of for data visualization. Something like stacked bar chart, right? So, as I told you that, we will talk about something called as Seaborn type thing. So here you can see this kind of graphs, right? Maybe something called as uh, stacked column chart, right? Same thing. <clears throat> you might have heard about something called as area chart also. There. We talked about box and whisker plot also. Or uh, uh, simplest graph is nothing but line graph, line and point I can say, right? Uh, pie chart. Yesterday we talked about this. It shows the distribution, right? I have given you the example of a uh, suppose uh, batch sites right? who scored the run, so who scored, who contributed how much. You can go and see that. Even in Tableau, also we have seen that, right? Something like waterfall chart, you might be doing now. This is also one, right? And one of the most common uh, charts is nothing but scatter plot. Right. This study, even I think we talked about. Then there is something called as you might be knowing about this one, funnel chart. Those people who who make use of Facebook, they might be aware about this one, funnel chart. Or maybe some of you uh, who are interested in uh, what you can say uh, making use of Facebook for different, different businesses, right? Analytics and all those things. So you might be knowing that uh, the ads, the ads which we see on Facebook, right? So it's actually a business. There are there are uh, different different trainings for that. So you might have seen different types of images with the help of which the uh, ads are uh, presented to you people as users, right? and we see that ad. So who actually creates those ads? So there are people behind that who make use of this one, funnel charts, right? Or funnels, I can say. Right? So yes, there is just to relate uh, just uh, in relation with that particular thing. There is something called as funnel chart. Right. And heat map, I hope you are aware about heat map. Heat map is something which you can make use of for correlation. Here's the command in Python that is called as dot C O R. 
with the help of which you can go and you can actually see the correlation between all the uh, all the columns in your data set, right? Something like this. So it map is going to be colored map, which is going to show you which will be related to which field more. Something like correlation, right? So all of these actually serve to expedite and improve the data uh, interpretation. All of these uh, graphs or charts, right? <clears throat> but yes, definitely we can say not all of them are actually appropriate for the same job for same kind of work. And choosing the right visual is the key to preventing user confusion and making sure your analysis is accurate, right? And that's why that's why one one should have uh, actually a basic idea about uh, these uh, all these uh, charts or plots we can see, right? So because see, once you have a basic idea about all of them, then only we can you, you can be in a position to decide okay, I can make use of this kind of a graph, this kind of a chart, and this kind of position, right? So for example, uh, talking about this particular thing, suppose uh, bar chart, right? So this is one of the most common types of data visualization tools. There is a reason uh, we learn how to make column charts in maybe in elementary school also, right? So they are simple, right? something like uh, you might have something like this one, right? So uh, they are they are actually simple. So you can also use a column chart to track uh, data sets over the time. So a column chart will include data label along the horizontal axis, right? X axis. And uh, some data labels right along with it, with measured metrics or values present there on Y. Yesterday, if you remember, we talked about something called as the dimensions and measures, right? So I told I told you what is the dimension, what's the measure, and what the difference between them. I told you that uh, generally the categorical columns, right? Categorical fields are going to be considered as dimensions, and the numeric data measures is going to be numeric data. So yes, this is what we make use of on x-axis actually. So it's a measured matrix. Right? Uh, so you can you can use actually column charts to track monthly sales figure, for example, revenue per landing page or similar measurements. Right? Obviously, there are some advantages and also there are some disadvantages uh, with the help of column charts. Right? This is specifically with this one. I can say column chart is easy to read and understand. This can be one of the advantages of column chart, or maybe uh, one data set can be changed without affecting the others in this case. Or uh, the ability to add data levels that are needed without, without cluttering the chart itself is actually too much to get from these charts. But yes, there are some disadvantages of one function for column chart. For example, if too many categories, it can become a bit too cluttered. If there, is a, there are a lot of categories in the data, and that's what actually happens in real time. Categories I need to say, suppose uh, you, you just talk about, suppose, category, you take any categorical column, right? So, but if there are two categories, no problem. But if there are a lot of categories, obviously, it's going to, uh, it's going to cause a lot of problems. Right? For example, if you have a column called as passenger class, yes, passenger, passenger class and the first class, second class, and third class. So, yes, in this case, it is okay. But what if you have a lot of categories, 50, 40, 100, 200, something like that? In that case, this is going to be even complex or cluttered. And advanced cluster column charts tend to be more difficult to understand uh, from a quick glance, actually. Right? So there are some advanced charts also, but it becomes very, very difficult to, to make some of those things. Right? If the data increases, obviously, the difficulty level to go on in this case. Right? So these are some of the types actually if you go and if you try to read about all those things definitely you will see that there are some advantages there are some disadvantages so how you can get a uh, better idea that which to, which kind of a graph can be used in this situation so experience or, or just go and try to make use of these charts in some of your uh, projects right some of the problems that you definitely it's, it's going to give a better idea to to make use of all these things and that is what the best way to uh, what you can say to understand how how you can go and actually you can decide about which which tool which uh, type of a chart you can make it up in which case or in which situation. Right? So practice is the one that actually which is going to help you to do all this. So yes, that's also a bit of a vertical point, but I just wanted to talk about that and it's mentioned in syllabus. So this is what we have said: introduction to data visualization, challenges to pre data visualization, techniques for. Visual data representation and types of data visualization. Okay. 
Okay. Now, visualizing the big data, let's see some of the examples here. Before that, I will try to talk about some graphs. I will try to show I will, uh, some graphs here. I will try to do some hands on. And then maybe, I hope you will understand it better. At tools, we already talked about Tableau. I, I, yesterday, when I said that if you want to go further and if you really want to understand about Tableau, just let me know. You can approach anytime. No problem at all. Really, if you are interested. Okay. <clears throat> And yes, the next point which I want to talk about is uh, this one, C1 packet. I just want to give you a basic idea about this C1, in which I'll be talking about some of the data visualizations with the help of these types of plots. So I'll be talking about distribution plots, like dist plot, joint plot, pair plot, rough plot, KDE plot. KDE actually stands for kernel density estimation. I, I want to talk about this and I want to show you how we go on any plot the data visualization. For example, I have a data like this. I have a data of tips. This is data of some restaurant. Okay. So the columns are like total bill and tip and sex and smoker and day, time and size. So for example, how many people came to the restaurant to? At what time? At the time of dinner. What was the day? It was Sunday. Uh, any, any smoker was there? No. What was the, the sex of a person? So both of them were female. Right. So how, how, how much was the tip given by that particular person? So one point zero one dollar, and what was the total bill? Sixteen point ninety nine dollar. Right. So like this, we have near about I think uh, two hundred records. So the fed command here we are able to see only five records, but we have near about two hundred records. So what we will be doing is we will go and we will try to analyze the data with the help of data visualization. Right. Why? Why? Why do so? Because we need to come up with some output here, and we need to come up with some decisions. So for example. Uh, uh, as a as a owner of the restaurant, I want to decide which day, which time uh, is preferred by uh, male or female, for example, right? Or what is the time? Is it dinner or is it lunch? Most of the customers prefer, right? So that's what we actually want to do. Uh, and because see, once once a, a restaurant owner comes to know about which time customers prefer, right? within the restaurant obviously at that time we can actually think about providing many uh, many facilities in, 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 uh, in that particular duration of time suppose many people prefer uh, lunch time or dinner time so what what uh, the restaurant owner can do is the restaurant owner can concentrate or give more focus to the people who are going to visit at the dinner time right Something like this, you can go and you can actually uh, talk about the data set. You can visualize the data set, right? This is what I want to do. I, I will show it to you. Something like this, we will be talking about how to plot the distribution plots, right? So <clears throat> we can see joint plot. So these are some of the plots I want to talk about: standard plot, regression, residual plot, KDE, and hex plot. Okay. So this is all possible with the help of something like Seaborn package. If you are aware about it, just let me know. Maybe in the WhatsApp group, I will not discuss about it. If you are aware about it, if you are not aware about it, then I will discuss about it. Right? So if someone knows about it, just let me know. Otherwise, what I will discuss is directly I will show you a final process. With the help of which uh, you can go and you can actually try to build similar kind of process. Maybe uh, machine learning, deep learning, whatever it may be. If, if you are interested, just let me know. I can see many people are joining in the last five minutes, so it's okay. For them, at least we will stop here. We will give some time to them to send their numbers and names. Okay, people, just send your numbers and names. I will stop here.